from the book of Zechariah, the ninth chapter, and the ninth and the tenth verses. Now, there are some very sensitive words that are used in our context, and I won't use the uh, original origin of those words. I will substitute words for those, but please know I know what these words are, and I know the appropriate context in which they were written. It's just that uh, some people are sensitive to those words, and I can interchange the appropriate words, so that's what I will do. Somebody say, Lord, help the past. So if you have Zechariah 9 and 9, and St. Matthew 21, 4 through 11, say amen. Amen. All right. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold thy king coming, coming unto thee. But somebody, the king is coming. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. Mm -hmm. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea. And from the river even to the ends of the earth. Now let's turn to the book of St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, the 4th to the 11th verses. St. Matthew 21, 4 to 11. Yeah. You have it, say amen. Amen. Since all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, that St. Prophet Zechariah. Tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey, and a colt the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees, and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Touch your neighbor and tell them, who is this? Who is this? And then you see it in the Have you, you ever looked for something in your in the garage or in your closet? And you you kind of you kind of missed what you were looking for because it was packaged differently or it was uh, concealed. Uh, in something that, that you could not see. You were looking for a square box, and, but it was in an oblong container, and uh, you, you, you missed it because it wasn't what you were looking for. When Jesus was making his triumphant entry in the book of St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, and beginning at the first verse, most of his people, the Jews of that day, missed him as being the Messiah because he didn't look like what they expected him to be. They expected Jesus to be a political. They looked for him to be a political deliverer. They, they wanted him to be a military king. They, they wanted him to come riding in on a stallion with authority and with power so he could set them free from the yoke of the Roman bondage. They were not looking for a lowly savior riding on a donkey. They could not conceive a suffering savior who came for this time at this hour. So they missed who Jesus was because they had the wrong expectations of Jesus. Will you touch your neighbor and ask him, what are your expectations of Jesus? They were looking for someone like a genie 
in a bottle. You know, you run the bottle and make a wish and the genie comes out and gives you everything what you ask for. But I want you to know that Jesus is not like a genie in a bottle. Amen. And believe it or not, saints of God, uh, he may not give you everything that you ask for. I heard one of them. Now the reason why he won't give you everything you ask for is because everything you ask for, you really don't even need. Ain't that be true? But I want you to know that Jesus is the King of Kings and he's a Lord of Lords and he knows exactly what you need. As a matter of fact, if you abide in him and he abides in you and his word abides in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be granted unto you. But now let's not take that out of context because when you abide in Jesus, you know exactly what Jesus' will is. And don't work a job that don't pay enough money to buy a Lamborghini and then ask Jesus to give you one and when you don't get it, then you get mad at Jesus. See, because it must not have been his will for you to get that Lamborghini. Maybe you need to, uh, you know, kind of appreciate what you already have. Can I get three witnesses here? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who is Jesus? Tell somebody, Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is King. Yeah, he is. He is the King. Not only is he the King, but he's the King of Kings. And he's a Lord, a Lord, and he's bread when I'm hungry, and he's water when I'm thirsty, and he's my healer when I'm sick, he's my deliverer when I need to be set free, he's my way maker out of no way, and if I was in trouble when I called on Jesus, he may not come when I want him to, but I'm glad that when he comes, he's always on time. Can I get four witnesses here somebody? So I hear David talking about this king hundreds of years before he makes his triumphant entry. He says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Mm, sound like a commission song, don't it? Who is the king of glory? So he says, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Glory means weightiness. And I want you to know that God is a spiritual heavyweight. And if you're in trouble, and if you are in difficulty, and if you got problems that you can't handle, and you got situations that you cannot control, you need to call on the King of Glory. Because the King of Glory can handle every situation. He's strong. Sorrow as 
a baby. He came as a humble and he came as a suffering servant. But Jesus also possessed a quiet but a total authority over all things, over all people, and even on the others. On Palm Sunday, to fulfill this prophecy, Jesus had to have a public demonstration to show the Jewish people and their rulers that he was and is the Messiah. Amen. Tell somebody, who is, this? who is this? Although the Jewish leaders hated him, they couldn't lay their hands on him until he was ready for them to. They hated him. They talked about him. They questioned him. They threatened his authority until the time had come that was right, though. They couldn't touch Jesus. Even the wind and the rain and the seas yes. obeyed him. Yeah. One time the disciples went, Jesus told the disciples to, to go out and stretch out into the sea. And Jesus came unto them at around 3 o'clock in the morning. And the wind was, was blowing and the rain was descending. And here comes Jesus walking on the midst of the water. Why? Because Jesus is the only person I know who can walk on the water and not sink down into the depths of the sea. Why? Because he had all power and he had all authority. He was fully man and he was fully God. Can I get your witnesses here, somebody? And so, as the wind was blowing and descending and Jesus was walking on the midst of can I tell you that Jesus can walk on the midst of the water in your life? He can walk on the midst of the water so much so that he can take control of your life. If you put your trust in Jesus, everything will be alright. And I know the wind is blowing. And I know the rain is descending. But the God I serve, he's able to speak to the wind.
justice. The primary reference is the king administers justice. He's fair. He believes in doing the right thing. He's concerned about all of the people. We live in a country now where I don't know if our government believes and treats all the people fair. I just, this, this new presidential administration, some people that they have supported that don't go along with treating everybody fair and equitable. It's not right. And uh, you can uh, be in the church and be naive if you want to. But everybody don't like you. I said everybody don't like you. And you haven't done anything to deserve it. Have you ever been somewhere and you walk down the street and it's a, it may not be heavily trafficked and people riding down the street kind of ease their elbow over on their lock button. Yes, yes, and I'm thinking to myself, I ain't going to do nothing to them. I said, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to do anything to them. They have nothing to fear. Come on, somebody. Everybody's got a thug. Excuse my vernacular. We ain't all gay bangers. But there is a culture in our society that looks at us in a certain way. That's right. That's right. And sometimes I really don't even understand. Because they walk and talk on the cell phone and I'm driving a car. Right. For somebody, but I'm glad. So glad. Oh God, that God. Come on, somebody say, but I'm glad that God glad is a just God. Is a just God. Yeah. Yes, he is. God will treat you right. He'll yeah. treat you yeah. fair. Yeah. He has your best interests at heart. Yeah. Who tell somebody he's almost done? He's almost done. Jesus Christ. Who is it? He is the King of yeah. Salvation. But God, tell somebody, but God, but God, commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners. Y'all better stop telling, stop telling folks you a sinner. Hmm. While we were yet sinners, tell somebody, Christ died. And when Christ died, he made me a saint, saved by grace. I'm not living in a lifestyle of sin anymore. I don't have the seed of sin operating in my life. Because Jesus took out the stony heart and gave me a heart of flesh that is pliable, that is, that is able to be talked to, that is able to be taught. I want you to know some of us need to learn that God can teach us something. He's endowed with salvation. He's, Jesus is clothed with salvation. Yeah. Jesus not only wanted to save his people politically at the right time, but in the book of St. Matthew, the first chapter and the 21st verse says, and she shall bring forth the son, yeah. and thou shalt call his name Jesus, yeah. for he shall save his people, not in their sins, but he shall save them from their sins, and he'll make white as snow. Though your sins may be red as crimson, he'll make them white as snow. Can I get a witness here, Father? Yeah. Who is who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Jesus Christ is the king. He is the king of humility. That sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? King. King of Humility. How are you going to be a king and be humble? I would think that he would be a humble king. But the reason why he was a he was a 
humble king is because he came as a servant. Yes. Normally leaders don't come as servants. When he would come, he should have been riding on a stallion, a big, a big horse that signifies power and, and authority and might. But Jesus comes riding on a lowly donkey. Not only a lowly donkey, but he was riding on a foal of a donkey. A donkey was a lowly animal used for, for peaceable purposes. Jesus came to humble himself, to bring himself low, to not think about himself, but he told his father, Father, prepare me a body. I'm concerned about mankind, and I know that you made me to be a, a slain lamb of God before the foundations of the world, that, that I should be humble and operate in humility. And he is the king of authority. He's the king. Who is he? He's the king of justice. He's the king of salvation. And finally, he, and he's the king of humility, but finally, tell somebody, he's the king of creation. Amen. Look at Jesus. He comes in on an unbroken colt. Normally, if you, if you ride on an unbroken colt, if you go out to a farm, and get a donkey or you get a horse that has never been ridden on before. The first thing when you come near it, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to be bucking and kicking and chopping violently and, and trying, trying to get you off of them, trying to get you away from them. But I want you to know that Jesus was the king of creation. He had dominion over the animals. He had dominion over the sea. He had dominion over the birds of the air. He had dominion on those things that creeped around. He had dominion over the grass. Uh -huh. He had dominion over weeds. And that's why you don't need to be smoking grass. And that's why you don't need to be smoking weed. Because Jesus has given you dominion over that stuff. You get to smoking that stuff and it will have dominion over you. Somebody shout glory. This unbroken colt had never been ridden on before. But I want you to know sometimes animals are smarter than us. I said sometimes animals are smarter than us. When Balaam, when they told him to pronounce judgment against God's people, and they had paid him off so they could talk bad about God's people, and how uh, he wanted to put a curse on God's people. And, and Balaam was on his way to go and pronounce a curse on God's people. And there was a donkey that Balaam rode. And Balaam tried to get the donkey to take him where he was going. And he began to beat the donkey. He was mad at the donkey. And he finally he asked the donkey, donkey, what's mad? What's wrong with you? Yeah, I've, been, I've been a good master to you. I've fed you apples and pears. And I paid you grass and pay, and you won't treat me like that. The donkey said, well, baby, I don't know about you. But if you take a good look down the road, you see an angel with a, with a, 
So the cold came. And they brought the coat. The unbroken, the unridden coat to Jesus. And Jesus just politely just stepped up and got on it. And rolled down the street in the process of his triumphant entry. The people didn't receive him, but the donkey did. Yes. Now, I'm finished. Now, who is this? Mm. He's a king of kings. He's a lord of lords. He, he, has, all, he has all authority. Who is this? He has all power. Who is this? He has dominion over everything in the earth, under the earth, over the earth. Who is this? So, so since we know who Jesus is, touch a neighbor and ask him now, what is your responsibility? When I see the coming king, when I see the king is here, when I see the king has met all of my expectations, I do see people throwing their cloaks out, throwing and getting them palm branches and shouting, Hosanna to the highest. God, I give you the highest praise. What is my responsibility? I have a responsibility now to live for Jesus. I have a responsibility to treat everybody right. I have a responsibility to love everybody. I have a responsibility to tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. Because if Jesus can do it for me, if Jesus can bring me out, if Jesus can heal my body, if Jesus can touch my mind, if Jesus can show me the way, he can do it for you too. We have a responsibility to tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. We have a responsibility to tell somebody about God's goodness. We have a responsibility to tell somebody else God can heal my body, God can touch my mind, God can bring me through, God can make a way. Everybody stand. You got a responsibility. If you can't do anything else, if you can't give a dime, if you ain't got two nickels to run and rub together, one thing you can do that nobody else can do for you, one thing that, that is not in anybody else, but it's in you to do. And the Bible says to rejoice. Rejoice greatly. Rejoice because God brought you out. Rejoice because God made a way. And don't only rejoice when you come to the house of the Lord. And see, sometimes we think rejoicing is a whole lot of physical activity. Which is all right, and that's all good. Ooh, but you can be in your house, and you begin to think about the goodness of Jesus. You begin to think about how they turned you away. You begin to think about that you weren't supposed to be here.
you really don't know who Jesus is. He wants you to get to know him. In a very real and special way. If you're here and you like to give your life to God, he's waiting with open arms for you to come right now. If you're here.